あの現象を俺はリバイバルと呼んでいる損することは分かってるのに関わってしまうだいたい1分から5分くらい前に戻って同じ光景を見る決まって何か悪いことが起こる直前だまるで誰かにお前が防げと強制されてるかのように違和感を探している自分がいる結果何度となくトラブルを回避してきた Welcome to the seventh episode of Taki Soba, with a review for Erased. I'm Amy Madman Molesh, and this is my boy, Nate. Erased is a psychological mystery anime that has a time travel element similar to Science Gate, which we both watch. What did you think about this one, Nate? I thought Erased was great, very good mystery elements, and similarly to Science Gate, it left me feeling many things fear, sadness, anger, confusion, and of course, suspense. It's definitely more different than similar to Science Gate, but I think if you like that, you'll definitely like Erased. A r a c e aired in the winter season of 2016 with 12 beautiful, haunting episodes. It's about a young adult named Satoru who develops a special ability where he can tell when something bad is about to happen near him and try and travel s to the past to attempt to prevent it. In the very first episode, something life changing happens to him that is linked to his childhood. So, to prevent it from happening, he has sprung all the way back to 1988. Now, I'll let Nate expand upon that. Similarly to Steins Gate, Satoru time travels in the mind. When he finds himself in 1988, he's placed in his 11 year old body, but he still has his 29 year old memories and personality. This is important as he develops a duality, where sometimes he acts with caution and maturity, but also acts rashly and immaturely since he's still literally a kid. The primary mystery in this psychological anime is the kidnapping and murder of his schoolmates. And with memories from his original timeline, Satoru must prevent this while reliving his youth, with support from his friends at the time. With that in mind, we'll discuss the characters. The primary character is Satoru, who in the first episode is a mellow 29 year old and working a simple job before he develops his uncontrollable time travel ability. He gets someone used to it and starts developing a mindset for seeking out danger and solving mysteries. As I said before, when in his childhood body, he still sometimes acts rash, but does a good job considering he can only rely on clues and memories from his original timeline, like police reports written after the fact. The main victim Satoru attempts to save is his classmate Kayo, a depressing girl who is dehumanized by years of child abuse. Satoru receives great help from his supportive mother and his childhood friends, who I'll let Malesh talk about. As Dave mentioned, Kyle suffered years of abuse from her unstable mother, and this leads to Kyle to having a very bleak attitude on life as he does not really feel like she belongs in this world. Satoru strongly wants to help Kyle and show her that, you know, life it really is worth living, and through his actions, help Kyle realize that there are people that really do genuinely care about her. The character development was the best part of the show for me. As the audience can really connect with how Kyle was feeling in the beginning, which of course made us want her to find happiness in her life. s a t o r u also gets help from childhood pals, primarily Kenya, who is a calm, calculated dude that realizes the changes in s a t o r u s personality early on, making him one of the few allies that s a t o r u can really trust on his mission to save Kyle. As for the killer himself, there are tons of hints sprinkled throughout the show. However, it does not make it obvious who the killer actually was, and actually did a good job in throwing people off his scent with clever red herrings and such. The anime was done by A1 Pictures, who have created beautiful shows in the past like Year Light in April, but have also made some very ugly shows like Denpei Kiyoshi. Luckily, A1 put their best team on our age, which made it one of the standouts of the season, animation wise. The character detail in particular really stood out, as all the characters had great attention to detail. Making each character look and feel unique. Overall, A1 did a really great job, but like most of their shows, there are certain scenes that could have been handled better towards the end of the series. Like Malesh said, it has a very cinematic feel, and I think that many scenes exemplify this with the dramatic composition and angles, dark colors, intense figures looming around, etc. The opening theme's visual sequence is animated extremely well and has some very clever foreshadowing. You should watch the opening every time, even if you're binge watching. Since this show is hot off the Japanese air, there's no doubt. However, the original voice acting was pretty solid, and this is actually the debut role for both the adult and child Satoru voice actors. Both did a great job, and not only did adult Satoru's voice really feel his initially boring personality, it still fit later on as child Satoru's inner thoughts used his adult voice, and his extended moments of thought when he was analyzing situations really fit well with his calm and intelligent voice. In terms of soundtrack, the anime also did a great job there. I love the opening and ending themes. The bulk of the show is light on background music, but the most intense moments, like flashbacks, time travel, or horrifying reveals, were accompanied with appropriately strong pieces. The opening was done by the wildly popular Asian Kung Fu generation who knocked it out of the park. However, I do prefer the ending as it fits the more melancholic nature of the show. 
After the soundtrack itself, it had a nice blend of intense instrumental pieces during the more tense moments of the show, and sad, graceful pieces for more emotional scenes. In conclusion, I've simply got to say this anime is amazing. My only major complaint with the show as a whole is that I felt the falling action was a bit lackluster. Mm. There's some odd development in the final episodes. They didn't feel as impressive and they felt somewhat rushed. I'm told the manga's ending is longer and significantly different. Don't spoil it. Other than that, the show is still very powerful. It had my gut churning, and I was sometimes on the edge of my seat, and sometimes leaned far back in shock. I also think that due to the show's character development, no matter who you think is or isn't the killer, we'd be left saying, WHAT?! when everything pieces together. This show is a recommendation for me across the board, again especially so if you like Science Gate. Our race was a really fun show to watch weekly. It always kept me guessing on who the killer was, and I was really surprised by how attached I got to the characters, mainly Kayo. There are some problems with this show, mainly the last couple episodes that felt rushed, but these episodes didn't attract too much from Erased, and I wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone wanting to see a nice mystery thriller type of show. You can watch this show for free on Hulu, Funimation, Daisuke, and even Crunchyroll. Something for everybody. As always, if you've already watched Erased, click the first link in the description for our post-review discussion, which includes spoilers and like our thought process and who we thought was the killer was, stuff like that. And thanks for watching our review of Erased. Please give it a like or comment for feedback, and we'll see you guys next time with a review for Spice and Wolf. It's gonna be spicy. Mamma mia. <laughs>